anatomy of ciliary body ciliary body is a part of uvea or uveal tract we know that uveal tract consists of three parts the iris the ciliary body and the choroid the ciliary body is located between the iris and the choroid on cross section it has the shape of a triangle whose apex is close, close to the choroid and the base is close to the iris it attaches to the cilia externally creating a potential space called the supraciliary space parts of the ciliary body there are two main parts in the ciliary body they are the pars plana and the pars plicata we will see one by one in pars plicata otherwise called as the corona ciliaris it is the wider anterior portion it contains the ciliary processes which is the actual site of acrosomal production there are approximately 70 to 80 ciliary processes which extend into the posterior chamber the regions between the ciliary processes are called the valleys of quint Uh, this is an image of an eyeball viewed from the posterior side the outer layer shows the sclera choroid and the retina the central white circle sh- is showing the posterior lens surface uh, the brown flower like pattern seen here is the pars plana and the white portions are the pars plicata it is shown in white because of the ciliary processes which is actually located in the pars plicata the zone which connects the lens with the ciliary body the ciliary process measures approximately 2 mm in length 0.5 mm in width and 1 mm in height but there are significant variation in all the measurements pars plana otherwise called as the orbicularis ciliaris it is the sagittal view of the eyeball showing the pars plana uh, pars plana is the posterior portion of the ciliary body it is relatively fat and very pigmented it is continuous with the choroid at the ora cerebrum layers of the ciliary body from out to in the ciliary body has the following layers they are the supraciliary lamina the ciliary muscle ciliary stroma epithelium and the internal limiting membrane let's see each layer in detail supraciliary lamina or supraciliaris it is the outermost layer of the ciliary body adjacent to the sclera it is a loose connective tissue and is arranged in ribbon like pattern containing the pigmented melanocytes fibroblasts and the collagen bands the arrangement of these bands allows the ciliary body to slide against the sclera without detaching from it or stretching the tissue damage to the layer caused by trauma may result in ciliary body ciliary muscle the ciliary muscle consists of three separate muscle fibers longitudinal circular and the radial fiber longitudinal fibers Each muscle bundle resembles a long narrow V the base of which is at the sclera spur whereas the apex is in the choroid the tendon of origin attaches the muscle fibers to the sclera spur and to the adjacent trabecular mesh work sheath the insertion in the anterior one-third of the choroid is in the form of a stellate shaped terminations or muscle stars the contraction of the longitudinal muscles opens the trabecular mesh work and the sclerens canal circular fibers otherwise called as sphincteric fibers it is more anterior than inner portion and run parallel to the limbus this insertion is in the posterior iris when these fibers contract the zonule relaxes increasing the lens axial diameter and its convexity thus helps in accommodation radial fibers also called as the oblique or intermediate fibers it connects the longitudinal with the circular fibers the contraction of these fibers may widen the uveal trabecular space ciliary stroma the highly vascularized loose connective tissue it lies between the muscle and the epithelial layers and forms the core of the each of the ciliary processes anteriorly the stroma is continuous with the iris stroma and posteriorly continuous with the choroidal stroma the major arterial circle of the iris is located in the ciliary stroma anterior to the circular muscle and near the iris root the stromal capillaries are large and penetrated particularly in the ciliary processes and most are located near the pigment ciliary epithelium there are two layers outer pigmented and the inner non pigmented the outer pigmented epithelium is composed of cuboidal cells it is the forward continuation of the retinal pigment epithelium anteriorly it is continuous with the anterior pigment epithelium of the iris the inner non pigmented epithelium is composed of low columnar or cuboidal cells it is the forward continuation of the neurosensory retina anteriorly it is continuous with the 
posterior pigment epithelium of the iris. These two layers of the epithelium are appositioned in their epical surfaces. Intercellular junctions, desmosomes and the tight junctions connects these two layers. Internal limiting membrane. It is the forward continuation of the internal limiting membrane of the retina. It lines the non-pigmented epithelial layer. Functions of the ciliary body. It has three major roles. The ciliary muscle causes accommodation. The ciliary processes produce and secretes the aqueous humor. It can affect the aqueous outflow. Blood supply. The blood supply is provided by the two sets of branches of the ophthalmic artery, the anterior ciliary arteries and the long posterior ciliary arteries. These tiny arteries anastomose with each other and compress a vascular circle near the iris root which they also supply. The blood is drained by the vorticose veins. They further drain into the superior and inferior orbital veins. Nerve supply. The major innovation is the parasympathetic innovation from the ciliary nerve branches. There is a shred of existing evidence in the literature showing that ciliary muscle also receives the innovation from the sympathetic fibers of the autonomic nerve. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Let's Learn Optometry for more